Okay, I was scouring through the internet, and what I saw on Twitter was this whole discussion as who would win in a fight, Daniel Cormier versus Mike Tyson. And of course, it seemed kind of laughable. Everybody knows the answer to this and why that's the answer. Of course, Daniel Cormier would destroy Mike Tyson in a street fight, but apparently, no, not everybody knows the answer. And there's a shocking amount of people that do believe someone like Mike Tyson could beat someone like Daniel Cormier in a street fight. So I went out there and retweeted it, got even more people to come and tell me, no man, Mike Tyson would beat Daniel Cormier in a street fight, to where, I can't believe this. Even Jimmy Manoa said the same thing. Yeah, that's uh, disappointing. He said that Tyson would just knock him out quick. No reason to it. Out of all the people that did tell me this, of like a bunch of the boxing fans and many MMA fans actually, a lot of people that even followed me have said the same thing. Think that Mike Tyson would win in various different reasons. The most disappointing was seeing that an actual MMA fighter who was dealt with wrestlers and stuff, who was a very powerful striker in his own right, big guy as well. I would have thought that Jimmy Manoa would have knew this. I mean, it's one of the simplest debates ever. <laughs> so I originally thought maybe I don't have to explain my reasoning as to why DC would beat Mike Tyson in a fight, but apparently maybe I do. It's not necessarily important about this discussion between these two guys, all respectable DC and Mike Tyson. I think they both understand who would win, but this is actually more about educating about these scenarios happening and breaking down as to why a more skilled fighter, vastly more skilled fighter, who's also bigger, would beat someone who's smaller and less skilled. Did we not already see what happened with Randy Couture versus James Tony? That was the clear example because back in that day, a lot of boxing fans also thought the same way. They thought that James Tony could hit Randy Couture one time coming in, uppercut against the takedown. The same thing I'm hearing about Mike Tyson and DC. Mike Tyson would just hit him with an uppercut. It's all over the thread. I'll link it in the description. You guys can look at it. It's all over. Everybody's saying uppercut against the takedown. Well, here's the issue. Number one. James Tony did not even throw an uppercut against the takedown. And why was that? Because he had no understanding of wrestling. And he trained for the fight. He trained against wrestling. Mike Tyson would not. Actually, James Tony has more knowledge on wrestling than Mike Tyson does. And that's important because the only way you can actually time a proper uppercut against a level change, against a takedown, is if you have understanding of level changing. If you have some understanding of wrestling. That's the only way it's going to work. That's why Derek Lewis landed the uppercut against Curtis Blades. To most people, Derek Lewis does not look like someone who knows about wrestling. But compared to Mike Tyson, Derek Lewis is like an Olympic wrestler. He's been training wrestling for over a decade. And against Curtis Blades, he's specifically trained against wrestling. And that's what he even said after the fight. He was only game planning against the wrestling, nothing about the striking. So you have to have some understanding of wrestling level changing in order to time that uppercut. Number two, uppercuts don't work against every single takedown. That's what a lot of people don't understand about wrestling. It's not just a double and single leg. There's way more to wrestling than that. How is he going to counter the low single? How is he going to counter the ankle pick? How is he going to counter many of these long range, really low leveled takedowns? You can't just throw an uppercut at them, especially the way that many boxers throw uppercuts like Mike Tyson, who don't throw the bolo style uppercut as much. They can throw it, of course, but that's not their usual style. Tyson has these short range and close uppercuts that really don't reach low. And the last thing is about the James Tony and uh, Randy Couture situation. Randy Couture knew to go for a low single because you can't hit him with an uppercut. What would happen in this situation is if Daniel Cormier shoots on Mike Tyson, doesn't even have to be a low single. He could just shoot in a regular blast double leg. Tyson would not know what to do in that moment. When you don't know wrestling, when you don't know takedowns, and one comes at you, you do not know how to respond. It's so foreign to you that your brain doesn't know how to react. Mike Tyson has never seen a takedown in his life at that level. If he saw some in the street fights sometimes by guys that don't know how to wrestle, that's a whole other thing compared to an Olympic wrestler who can shoot at a whole different kind of velocity and angle and power and timing. It's so different. When you're in a fight, you're usually reacting. You're not thinking. Mike Tyson would not know how to react in that situation. He might just throw a punch forward like a straight and get taken down. And from there, of course, it's over. And that comes down to if the fight would have to be on the ground. DC would probably even beat him on the feet. That's what a lot of people don't understand. He'll stay away from boxing range. DC is also very quick for a heavyweight, just as Tyson is. Tyson, I would believe, is faster. But DC could keep his range with kicks, side kicks. And if he wants to get into the clinch, he can land elbows and knees and even take him down from there very easily. A couple leg kicks from DC and the fight is completely changed. And a lot of people also bring in the fact that, oh, Tyson has the, the puncher's chance. Well, so is DC. If you're bringing in that Tyson has a puncher's chance, he can knock DC out with one punch. What's to say that DC doesn't have a puncher's chance either? He's 40 pounds heavier than Tyson. He's also very quick. He has a lot of power as a heavyweight. And he throws punches at very awkward angles. So even when you take the luck based of the fight about puncher's chance, 
It doesn't really change anything. But the main argument about this was rules. This is what I really wanted to get into. People have a misconception about rules and who it helps. This is not something that necessarily has to do with Mike Tyson and Daniel Cormier specifically. They believe that rules actually hurt the less skilled fighter, the guy who is more limited, the guy that doesn't have as many options when it comes to a fight. And we'll take Tyson and DC as an example. Rules will help Tyson in a street fight. That is the big difference. But what people are mistaking here is rules actually help the less skilled fighter survive and also be more capable in the fight. If there were no rules, the guy who has more options, the guy that can use different kind of skills and tools would generally have a bigger advantage. They can use their knowledge, they can use their skills and such to also implement these quote unquote dirty techniques. For an example, we look at all different variations of combat sports, the most limited versus the least limited. The least limited combat sport fighting sport in the world is MMA. It allows you to do more things than anywhere else that would be considered illegal or dirty. You can't kick in boxing, but you can kick in MMA. You can't elbow in most kickboxing belts, but you can elbow in MMA. You can't get someone an arm bar in Muay Thai, but you can in MMA, right? So when you look at MMA specifically, it's the least limited fighting sport before you get into street fighting. That's like the next step. So in a way, boxing is more based on the rules that will help someone in boxing fight an MMA fighter. The only reason why Daniel Cormier, for an example, lose to Mike Tyson in a boxing match is because the rules allow it to happen. If you take away rules, now the more skilled fighter, Daniel Cormier, has more advantages. This is nothing different than a street fight. The more you take rules away from the fight, the more it's going to favor someone like Daniel Cormier who is more skilled. This is something that a lot of people throughout years, I'm not talking about even now, decades, do not understand. And then eventually, if you wanna go into the whole aspect of bringing in weapons and stuff like that, yeah, that's when like the Marines or someone in the Navy or something like that, that's where they're gonna have more of an advantage in a combat situation because they have more skills when it comes to combat because they do train with weapons as well as other various martial arts. You have to limit the weapons in order for an MMA fighter to beat a Marine or something, you know what I'm saying? Knees to a ground an opponent is not legal in most MMA organizations. What would happen if that rule was taken away when the guy who has a wrestling advantage, he can now land knees on the ground an opponent if stomps are allowed, he can also land stomps. People keep talking about eye gouging and biting, but the guy on top actually can do that even better than the guy that's on the bottom. Headbutts, it will help more the guy who's on top. Some people will mention, oh, what about a guy who would defend the takedown and he can land knees while he's sprawling on the wrestler? Well, he's showing better wrestling technique. He's showing more skills in that area because if he wasn't skilled in wrestling, he wouldn't be able to defend that takedown. You wanna touch the guy's groin and stuff. Like when someone brings up almost every dirty technique and you flip it to, okay, what if the guy that's on top, what if he's doing that? It's always gonna make it harder for the guy that's less skilled. Because here's the thing in a Tyson and DC situation, if they're fighting each other, the only time it's ever going to get in close range enough for Tyson to use any of these dirty techniques is if like it's in the clinch or something, standing up. That's never going to be a thing. They are never going to be in the clinch. And the guy, again, who is more skilled in the clinch as well as a strike and all this stuff, he has more tools in his toolbox. He can use those dirty techniques even better. So exactly what is Tyson going to do to use these techniques to his advantage? His biting and yes, unironically, the people backing up Tyson in this whole debate have been saying that the bite that he showed against Holyfield would actually be used in a street fight against Daniel Cormier. And that's another reason why DC would lose the fight. I cannot. When is that ever going to be a thing? I mean, if we want, we can get specifically down to the detail as to why the bite actually worked against Holyfield. Number one, it wasn't even that fast. Number two, they were sitting in the clinch together. That's the only way Tyson's really going to bite someone like that. In a fast-paced grappling exchange where they're rolling around and scrambling and all that stuff, given the benefit of the doubt that Tyson could scramble, this is never going to work against someone like Daniel Cormier. So honestly, that's the main point here. People have to understand the concept of rules and who actually helps. It helps the less fortunate fighter be more capable in a fight. And I know these debates are never going to end. I know there's always going to be people that believe Mike Tyson could beat up anybody that a boxer can generally be an MMA fighter when it comes to no rules without actually knowing that taking away the rules is only going to help the MMA fighter even more. And I don't mind the fandom, right? Being a fan of Mike Tyson, being a fan of whoever it is, Conor McGregor, Habib, Bruce Lee. A lot of times that's where you see the most delusional fan base when it comes to like the biggest star 
stars in the world. People believe in that, you know, Bruce Lee can beat up Francis Ngannou because he's just too fast. People believe that Mike Tyson can beat up Daniel Cormier because he's just mean and he's from the streets. Conor McGregor can beat up Kamaru Usman because he just finds a way. The Habib delusion is not as bad, given the fact that Habib is so great. Like, he can actually do a lot of things that the fans say he can do. But when you start to bring up all him beating, you know, maybe Glover Teixeira or something crazy like that, that's not going to happen. But comparing Habib to Conor, to Bruce Lee, to Mike Tyson, Habib's on a whole different other planet when it comes to how great he is. So at the end of the day, I understand now how delusional a lot of Mike Tyson diehard fanboys are. And the main thing I wanted to talk about were the difference of the rules. And next, I'm going to get into some of the Charles Oliveira and Justin Gaethje breakdowns because, man, I cannot wait for that fight. There's some things to really pick out from there.